For many 3D artists, creating clots and simulations in Marvelous Designer has never been the problem. Most of them do have problems that has to do with exporting this from Marvelous Designer to some third-party applications for animation. Things that actually has to do with Alembic caches do come with some price. And some of the prizes actually have to do with getting the proper materials out of there, making sure that these actually simulate the way you want them and having a good looking render at the end of the day. In today's video, what we're going to take a look at is how you can create your animations directly in Marvelous Designer, things that has to do with simulations, create amazing UVs directly from there. And then of course we can take it to Keyshot, look at some pros and cons of exporting directly from Marvelous Designer to Keyshot, look at the issues that artists do face when they export their files directly from Marvelous Designer over to Keyshot. And finally, we'll go over to Substance Painter where we're going to take a look at certain issues, texture this directly there, export it out, and then bring it back to Keyshot where we're going to texture this and play around with this file. And if you're new to Marvelous Designer, Substance Painter or Keyshot, don't worry because we have a lot of videos and links that would get you up and running using these apps. And if you want to learn something new today, go ahead, sit down, relax, and let's get started. Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So we have Marvelous Designer open here and the goal for this uh, for this video, the goal for this tutorial is for us to go ahead and get this out of here. Now there is a whole lot of hurdles I know a lot of artists are going through which we're going to address. The first one is getting these out of here, getting textures applied to this object as an alembic file, getting it over to Keyshot and rendering it properly directly in Keyshot. Now there's a couple of things that we're going to look at within this process, things like backface calling and all that amazing stuff. So first things we need to do is to have our object like this and once you have this done, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. So this is our 2D pattern window here and this is the 3D model. So once you have all of this done, the next thing you need to do is to make sure you go over to animation, load up a certain animation that has to work with the model. So if you're getting a model that's an FBX model, then of course you should bake the FBX animation into this model. Videos that will show you how to do this would be in the description so you can go ahead and check that out. And once you have the animation loaded directly here, what you can do is just simply make sure that you have the animation playing. And for you to get the animation playing, you definitely have to click this, you know, record button. So once you have this done, you can see that we have our simulation happening here and this is actually ready for Alembic export. So what we're going to do is to simply export only the clock because we don't need the character at this point. And how we can do this is simply go back here and then of course would we'll come through, go over to the file menu, go over to export and we're definitely going to export this as the Alembic Ogawa. So for us to actually export this, there are certain things we need to consider. Alembic, just like every other file format, do retain UV coordinates. So the question is, how do you create UV coordinates by using Marvelous Designer? The cool thing is Marvelous Designer 8 actually comes with uh, a tool or a feature that can actually help you create UV coordinates. And these UV coordinates can be created from here. So if you go over to this section where you have simulation, click and go over to the UV editor, you can choose to arrange all of your patterns in a set. So you can choose to put it in one set, multiple sets, depending on what you want to do. But just for the sake of this video, we're putting everything in one set. So if you have everything scattered out, all you can do is just select all of them, or you can just simply right click and say fit UV to unified zero dash one set, and everything is gonna be fit around here. If you're trying to, you know, arrange this stuff, you can, let's say you have all of these things misplaced. If you're trying to arrange all of them, just select the appropriate ones that you want. You can right click and you can align them either to center or something like that. So once you have this done, the next thing you have to do is come over here, go over to the export, select Alembic or Gawa. You can also go ahead and try out with this one. And once you do that, you can enter the name. For us, we actually saved this previously as babe dash ABC, which is Alembic. And then of course you can go ahead and save. So once you save this, Marvelous Designer is going to go through and export this as Alembic. So you have a deformable mesh that will be exported out. Next off is to go over to Keyshot and see how you can actually work with this in Keyshot. So with Keyshot open, what we're going to do is go over to file, go over to this section where we have import. And then of course, we're going to go through and import the babe-abc. 
So we're going to also tell Keyshot that what we want to do right now is we want to calculate the normals. We want to make this a deformable mesh. And of course, we can hit import. If you select any of these other ones, you're definitely or probably not going to get your desirable result. So once we go ahead and click import, Keyshot will go through, read this file and import this for us. In most situations, when you're importing this, you might probably have an error, you know, window that has to look like this. Just go ahead and close this because it doesn't really matter as it stands. Next thing you're going to be able to see the whole movement that would be happening directly with this deformable mesh in your scene. So if you just go ahead and press the playback button, you would see that our model will go through and play through. All right. So this is playing back and you can see what we have here. Now, there is actually a big problem that we're having here. The problem which we're having here is we cannot actually assign our materials to a certain part of this object. And another problem we're having is at every single time, once we get to press the playback button, our object definitely goes back to T pose. All right. And then it starts playing back. And that's not what we want. So we want this object to actually start at a frame like this. So what we're going to do is go ahead, position this frame here, select this. Let's just go ahead and do that. Select this right here and position it where we want this to start. And now we can go through and press the playback button and you can see our object working from the point. So one problem is solved. Next problem is how can we get the textures that we want? So you might be saying that the time which you were working directly here, you added textures. Now those textures are very cool. They are nice. You know, if they exist directly here, they are very, very nice. Believe me. But in most cases, when you're working with Alembic, which is not the other uh, file formats, when you're working with Alembic, you have just one mesh that you would like to work with. So this introduces a brand new set of problems, which has to do with you going over to apply material to this, because you can see from what we did last time that if we choose to apply material, it applies overall on all of this model so what we can do is to take this object over to substance painter and then we can go ahead and start assigning you know materials to this so a quick one is we can go over pop up substance painter real quick go over to file come over here say new load up that particular file that we're working with so i'm just going to go back to md select this particular file we're working with click on open and you can see our abc file is loaded here Next thing which I'm going to do is just simply click on OK. So there is also a second problem I believe a lot of artists do have when they import their files into Substance Painter. So the problem is this, that most times you get to see back faces like this. Most times you see things like this, half of your mesh is missing. There is actually, you know, a solution to this. So just in case you're having this as a problem, it shouldn't bother you that much. What you need to do is to change the shader that you're working with. So from here, we can go over to this shader panel and I'm going to click on the PBR Meta Rough and I'll change it to something that has to do with PBR Meta Rough with Alpha Test. So you can see this icon by the side that actually signifies that that's what it's going to solve. So I'm just going to click that and you can see we have our solution here. The next thing which you would want to do is to go ahead and create as much layers as you want, texture these according to what you want. And then of course you can, you know, throw it back inside and export your textures out. So quick one is going to be something that we've done before. So I'm going to go ahead and reload the textures of something that we've done before. And unfortunately I was unable to save that, but I'm going to load it back here so that you guys can take a look at it. All right, so now that we have all our textures here, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you. They're not properly named, sorry about that. So now that we have all of our textures here, you can see what we've actually done. So I have this and they're just basically, basically, uh, you know, easy stuff that you can do. This is being driven by an opacity map. This is being driven by an emission. And yeah, these other ones are driven by normal maps. You can basically see all of them here. Now, there is also a couple of things that you guys might want to know. Like if, for example, you want to play with shadows directly here, you can go ahead, go over to the display setting, and then you can play with the shadows. If you cannot find any of these windows, of course, you can come through and check out for the windows directly here. This is basically for newbies if you're very new to uh, Substance. So 
now we can see what this looks like now this looks really cool but it would be very nice to actually have this you know deform directly in keyshots so what we will do is to simply go ahead and export this out and how we can export this is come over to file go over to export textures and then of course you can select this and come through and select key shots now if there are files that you or let's say there are channels you cannot export let's say there are channels like your opacity channel you cannot export that or let's say you cannot export uh, your emission channel because you're working with key shots what you can do is to go over to this section called configuration I already set up these ones previously so you can go ahead and do that but just for the sake of this video I'm going to go ahead and set something else so that you guys can see so if you come over here and you click the RGB plus A which is the red green blue and alpha you can come through and select from texture set which references to this one so it's going to select or take something from this texture set that is referencing this so if you want to get things like um, your opacity you can just simply drag your opacity depending on what you want this to be if you want it to live within the rgb of course you can select this and select any of them so it's asking if you want the gray channel or if you want just the alpha channel so from opacity i'm going to go ahead and select the alpha channel all right you can also do the same thing here so depending on what you want to create at the end of the day you can just go ahead and do it if you want to get just an rgb channel of course you can also do the same thing so it's going to be an rgb channel and also you can you know select the opacity select these and select just the alpha channel so it's going to export the black and white or whatever color that you have that exists directly there so you can choose whatever channel that you want and that's how you can get these things up and running so with that done you can come through inspect all of them from here let's go ahead and change this so that you can see what it looks like all right inspect all of them from here and then go ahead to export this out so once we export this out we are now ready to jump into keyshot where we'll be able to try out and you know play with this awesome tool if you want to know how to work with uh, substance painter especially if you're making use of substance painter 2019 there is a video that is in the you know in the channel you can go ahead and check those things out there's also a couple of videos that talks about substance painter in the channel it will be awesome if you can check those ones out as well now let's get back to keyshot with our object fully textured in substance painter so with the texture being exported we're going to launch keyshot so let's jump right into keyshot so keyshot keyshot so we're here in keyshot so i'm just going to select here just in case you cannot see this and let's say you don't have the freedom to rotate around your object what you can do is just right click and go over to the section that says uh, center and fit part and you're going to be able to find this here so i'm just going to make this walk over to a given point so I think this point looks good so let's zoom right in so that we can take a very good look at the model all right so we have this model right here so with this model here what we want to do now is to attach all of that texture that we've worked on in substance painter directly here of course there's a set of artifacts here which you can clean up later in post but then let's simply go on and you know play with this so i'm going to come over to the materials and by the way i think it's actually good that we give this object a very simple material it doesn't matter what material we're giving this object but let's just give it one all right so i'm just coming here i will go back and change this to diffuse so we just have this next off is to take this object material that we've just created all right all of this goodness we're going to go ahead and open the material graph now with the material graph we're going to do a whole lot of you know funny nice sweet magic so everything that you have to do right now exists in the material graph let's go ahead and actually set this to startup so we can have a very good view of what we're doing here and then i will go through open up my explorer and i'm loading up all of these textures that we've worked on in substance painter so i'm simply dragging all of them there let me take this out and i'll connect the most relevant ones that we want to work with so there is also a video in the channel where we've discussed about the material graph the nodes and how you can play with them in keyshot there is a whole lot of videos about keyshot that you can find in the channel and i think they will be very beneficial to you if you want to learn more about these things so i have this selected and i'm going to simply select this and go over to advanced so because we want to actually work with some advanced material right so next thing which i need to do is connect the very basic one which has to do with um 
the color or the diffuse so i'm just going to connect that first and we're definitely going to have that here don't worry now we're seeing this because this is actually set to box we can click here and change it to uv so with uv we have our basic object right there next thing which we need to do is to go ahead and get the next one i think the next one that will be really cool for us to actually load up here is the normal map so i'm just going to load this normal over to the bump all right so i have the normal loaded to the bump and you can see that once i go ahead and click here you can definitely see that we have these ones loaded up all right so if i also click here you can also see that we have this one loaded up so make sure you have normal map checked turned on all right next off we're going to see which other one is relevant right here we also have um the simple alpha so we're going to use the alpha to drive the opacity so i'll come through and use the alpha to drive the opacity and then you can see this directly here let's get this going and i'm going to use the roughness to also drive the roughness of this object so i'm just going to drive the roughness of the object from here our nodes are beginning to get a lot more for this other one i don't think we need this one because it's actually the same thing with um the alpha for the transparency is actually the same thing next thing which we need to do is to drive the emission we'll get to that and we need reflection so let's see do we have any reflection reflection yeah so we can use this uh let's actually just plug this directly here for let's just plug this in the specular right now all right so i'm just going to go ahead and plug that directly there so with all of this done if you want to check out any of this channel you just need to press c on your keyboard and you'll be able to check out the channels right so if you select any of those ones any of those uh, channels you want to check them out just press c you'll be able to see what they look like independently if you press c one more time this is going to come back and you can see what you're working with next off is to load up this so there is two things i need to tell you guys the first one is simple so the first thing that you need to do when you're working with this is you can choose to load up a simple emission directly here which goes to color then you can load this up to label and of course you can now notice that if i double click here and switch this over to uv all right we have the emissive sections all turned up now this would be really nice if your rendering passes you can have the emission all to yourself and you can work with it but for now what we want to do is just to have everything visible in our scene so we're going to simply go through and change this to diffuse now that we have this as diffuse you can also see that we have the label turned on and also we are seeing the same image directly there but how do we see our main texture and also this one so what we're going to do now is really really simple we're going to go ahead pick this up and then load it directly here where we have opacity so now once we throw this in you can start seeing that we have this and we also have these other ones now you might be asking why not use the emission all right so i'll tell you why because once we go over here and we choose to use the emission we're going to have a flat out object so depending on what you want to get so if you want to get a flat out object of course you can go ahead and use that but if you want to get something that is quite visible so that you can get all those nicely made or done shadows yeah then probably this might be the best thing for you so with this done we can just simply go ahead let's take out this there was no use for that and then of course we can just drop that by the side next thing i'm going to do is pop up the animation and of course we can play through and you can see our model is working so let's rotate around this make sure we have it all figured out all right all right then let's see what it looks like so right now you can now go through play your animation and see what it looks like this is really really interesting and i would like to see what you guys are going to go ahead and create and this tutorial is requested from an amazing 3d artist known as janice.com s n e so janice is an amazing guy and i've seen amazing stuff that he has created now if you want to learn marvelous designer we have a sister channel that is dedicated to marvelous designer you should go ahead and check it out the name is zarif link is going to be in the description just in case you want to get started with marvelous designer if you want to learn how to work with key shot we have a whole lot of content about key shots in the channel so you can go ahead and check that one out if you also want to know so much about substance painter you want to know the new features in substance painter or how you can get started with it there is content on the channel that will help you get you through 
learning or working with substance painter and that's about it guys i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section this is another episode of tutorial tuesday if you have questions if you have things you want us to talk about in the channel or you want us to cover some tutorials about this please put them in the comment section and i'll be very very excited to come through for you guys and if you learned something from this video go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so you don't miss the next video the next tutorial tuesday the next free friday the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial updates free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace